Welcome to Wayne County Connection. I'm your host, Michael Swigert. Thanks for joining me for another episode where we promote Wayne County as a great place to work, live, and play. So excited that you're here to join me today and for you doing your part to get connected to make Wayne County a great place to work, live, and play. As always, you can find out about what's going on by visiting our website at waynet.org cc. As we go through the last few weeks of winter and start making plans for spring and summer, it's really important to know what's going on and the ways that you can adjust your schedule to get involved in the area. And you can find out ways to get involved at waynet.org cc, where you'll find links about today's program and prior programs. You'll also find a link there to the Wayne County calendar at Waynet for events and activities that are going on in and around the area where you can get connected. Maybe you've let a couple of New Year's resolutions slide and you're looking for ways to get plugged in. Well, there's a great place to get started at waynet.org slash cc with today's program and the calendar. Speaking of today's program, we're excited to have join us today John Maley, and he is the board chairman for the Whitewater Valley Pro Bono Commission. Whitewater Valley Pro Bono Commission provides legal services in Wayne County, Indiana. And John, welcome to the show. Hey, my pleasure to be here. Hey, it's great to have you. And uh, for those who may not be familiar with your face but may recognize your name, uh, give us a little bit of your background here and your connection with Wayne County. Certainly, yeah. I grew up on uh, Main Street, 28th and Main, on the east side of town. Uh, my folks, uh, Bob and Charlotte Maley, uh, along with my brother and sister, uh, there. My mom's still living in, in Richmond, as is my uncle. Uh, my dad was a practicing attorney for decades in Richmond. Um, I'm a proud 1981 Richmond High School graduate, and then I practice uh, law here in the state of Indiana, out of Indianapolis, but I spent a, a lot of time back in my uh, hometown of Richmond, um, including uh, through this role with uh, Pro Bono. So a Wayne County native right here from Richmond and still doing great work here to promote Wayne County as a great place to work, live, and play. We really appreciate your efforts and uh, your your work here in the community. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with the Pro Bono Commission, uh, give us a, an overview of that and tell us what's going on with that here in Wayne County. Certainly. So uh, Whitewater Valley Pro Bono is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, just like so many other great organizations here in, in Wayne County that help serve the community. Um, and, and there's not in the civil side of law, so we're talking everything from family law, employment, social security, landlord, tenant, consumer rights, just everyday issues that, that people face as they're, they're trying to get through the day and the week. Um, there, there's not a, a governmental entity that provides those services. Uh, the Wayne County Courts and the judges and the staff do fantastic work and service but they're not allowed to represent and give legal advice. Uh, they have to or resolve disputes. Uh, so we help fill that gap. Uh, here, we're the only Wayne County-based legal aid provider is what often these organizations are referred to as. And it's all civil work. Uh, there are public defenders that assist on criminal cases, and that's a very robust system set up all across the country, uh, and, and including Indiana. But on the civil side, for everyday life legal needs, uh, there, there's no other organization. So we fill that gap, uh, providing services to those who are unable to afford private legal counsel. So Whitewater Valley Pro Bono is not a free criminal defense organization. So if you find yourself with a criminal charge, you would need to either uh, secure your own defense attorney or uh, avail yourself of the um, court-appointed attorney system, but if there are other issues that you have, um, like you mentioned a minute ago, uh, landlord-tenant issues uh, that are causing a problem in your civil life, then Whitewater Valley Pro Bono may be an opportunity or an, or an agency that can provide you with some advice and guidance um, about that issue. What if you don't know that you whether you need an attorney or not? I mean, where do you find out if you even need an attorney? Yeah, it's an excellent question, and if we're here to even ask that question, you know, to be reached out to and, and to facilitate what the problems or challenges or issues that someone has, and, and, and sometimes they're a hybrid of a legal issue, uh, sort of a common sense everyday issue. They may have a medical overlay or an education overlay, um, but uh, we can provide that initial triage or guidance 
to determine, all right, is there a legal issue? Uh, is there already an agency, local, state, or federal, that assists with that? For instance, if it's a um, civil rights claim and employment claim involving employment, uh, the Indiana Civil Rights Commission and the EEOC provide uh, assistance there so we can help get you to the right agency. If it's unemployment benefits, workforce development handles that. Uh, but there are a lot of areas of life where there are not governmental uh, entities there to serve in those areas. And so we help fill that gap. So the Whitewater Valley Pro Bono <laughs> Commission gives uh, legal support and, and legal counsel to people who might need it. Well, we understand that there have been some changes going on. The last time that we had the Pro Bono Commission on, it's been quite some time on our program, um, but there have been some changes in the staffing there. And walk us through what's going on with the Pro Bono Commission and how that affects the residents in Wayne County. Certainly. So we've uh, refocused and restructured our, our service model to be uh, one more efficient and, and to be able to serve more. Um, okay. We've got uh, a, a great group of lawyers in Wayne County. The, the local bar is fantastic, uh, but as in any community, there are only so many lawyers and they can only individually take on so many pro bono cases. Uh, so we try to deliver through some additional means. Uh, for instance, uh, Felicia Carter is our office administrator and paralegal, and uh, she's essentially working full time now with us uh, and is there as that first intake uh, resource to field the questions, whether they come by email, by uh, submitted form, or by phone. And then uh, a number of our volunteer lawyers then, including our board members, help uh, navigate at the first level uh, what might be uh, necessary, how we can help that individual. And oftentimes it, it just takes someone to listen and ask the right questions to figure out, oh, this is an unemployment issue, and so it needs to go to workforce development, or this might be for the trustee's office or uh, Social Security. Um, then we do um, uh, ask a lawyer clinics now, and we're, we've increased those to a monthly basis, partnering with Morrison Reeves Library, who's been very uh, uh, accommodating to us and uh, allowing us to do that on site. And we also have a remote Zoom component to that. So we have volunteer lawyers who uh, will serve for several hours and people are welcome to come in. They don't have to register in advance. Um, and we've had good turnout uh, already just in, in the last quarter with the whole range of, of legal issues and concerns. Um, and oftentimes we're able to solve those problems right there on site. Other times there may be some follow-up where we may guide them, all right, you need to next go to the court and do this or go to this agency and do this. If you're still having problems, still having challenges, come back to us. And so they're able to come back through to Felicia and, and then network through our volunteer attorneys. And then lastly, uh, and this is a, a new change that we're building a uh, panel of attorneys uh, who will be regularly on call for Felicia to match with when just from a little bit of guidance, we haven't been able to solve the problem and we actually need to match a volunteer attorney uh, with that uh, Wayne County resident to, to help get them the next stage and hopefully solve the problem. So through this a bit of restructure uh, delivery model, uh, we're impacting, I think more regularly uh, at people's needs on a daily basis, able to have that um, live contact or phone or Zoom contact more regularly, and then build the volunteer base, both within the Wayne County Bar and also outside of, of Wayne County. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a moment separately, where we've um, found a way to, to find others like me who grew up uh, and are proud of Wayne County uh, natives, but may not be living and practicing in Wayne County, but want to give back to the Richmond and Wayne County. Well, a lot of questions have come up have you, as you've been talking and describing what's going on there. And I, I could probably go on for hours uh, with questions about, well, let's talk about this. Let's talk about uh, some details about pro bono. But I want to talk specifically about um, how the restructuring is providing better service to 
Wayne County residents. One of the things that I think of with an attorney is they're always so busy. If I have a pro bono case and the attorney is trying to make money, that my case is just not going to be a uh, priority for them. It's going to take forever, and uh, I may never get an, an adjudication here. Things have just may languish. Uh, how does the pro bono commission address that with Wayne County residents? Excellent question, and all uh, members of the bar, all of us take an oath to serve, and when we take on a client, whether it's uh, a Fortune 500 uh, client, a family-owned business in Richmond, or an individual that has uh, a landlord-tenant issue and can't afford legal counsel, we owe the same uh, obligation to every one of those clients, act in their best interest, uh, and, and we're governed by uh, rules of professional conduct that require that. Um, and, and so people should rest assured that pro bono lawyers are full-fledged lawyers. <laughs> um, we've, we've got busy practices and lives otherwise, uh, but we take uh, this obligation seriously and this responsibility. And, and frankly, we enjoy it because it's a great way to give back. Uh, did, did we all go to law school to be able to you know, raise our families and educate them and provide for them? Well, well that's part of it, but Everyone I know that went to law school did it in part to serve others. And we've got this unique training background experience where we can help navigate and solve problems uh, that non-lawyers aren't able to. Um, so no, no reason to be concerned that the pro bono volunteer lawyer will be less of a lawyer. We're bombarded in media with the uh accident attorneys, the ambulance chasers, if you will, that it seems like their only thing uh, is to get money. And uh, there's a lot of law that is not about just getting money. It's about actually resolving a dispute. When, when two people or two agencies cannot reach a, a conclusion uh, that is mutually beneficial to them without outside assistance, and that's where the law steps in a lot of times. In fact, I would say in the majority of cases, that's what lawyers do, is help arbitrate conflict. Absolutely, we're, we're problem solvers. Um, yes, sometimes uh, we need to go to court and we need to advocate and we've got to push through the, the court system, um, but uh, particularly the types of issues that we're regularly dealing with, uh, we're really called on to, to listen find pathways to make this Wayne County residents life better and easier and, and work through the challenges that the everyday person faces. My experience with attorneys has been much more calm that, that attorneys are not the uh, go-getter shark type uh, individuals that are just always run, 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 but that are more calm and more willing to listen to what you have to say. And I guess that that's the type of attorney that would be um, not only attracted to pro bono work, but it would also do the best work in pro bono for people that need an advocate. Absolutely. It, it, li listening is job one, uh, having compassion uh, for, for people's situations. Um, and even when the question that comes up, for instance, at these ask lawyer clinics, may not be something that um, when I do it, for instance, may not be an issue that I regularly deal with, but what, what lawyers have is the ability to find the law uh -huh. and then figure out the, the pathway to a solution. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're all about problem solving. Sometimes it does take a little bit of leverage or, or some advocacy, uh, but for many of the issues that Whitewater Valley Pro Bono uh, receives, you know, we're, we're more in a problem solving mode. Now you just mentioned something that ties in with uh, what you mentioned earlier about the restructuring that uh, when you're sitting on the ask a panel, uh, ask a lawyer panel, that sometimes there's a question that's not right in your wheelhouse, something that you're really versed in. And the pro bono commission has switched from having a full-time attorney on staff to having more of a clearinghouse of attorneys available to address issues. Would you say that the benefit of that is a broader range of expertise because one person can't know it all, uh, but it does it give the opportunity for maybe a better law outcome for the clients? Yeah, definitely. There, there are some advantages. Um, uh, oftentimes at the, the Ask a Lawyer clinics, for instance, as 
uh, Felicia and um, our other screener will first meet the people and find out what their issues are. Uh, we, we can, among the volunteers, say, hey, this is an employment issue. Uh, well, gosh, I spent a fair amount of my practice in the employment area. So I'm able to take that where somebody else might have a more bankruptcy knowledge, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it, it does allow for what, what are the lawyer's backgrounds and experiences and where can we best make that match uh, when it is an area of specialization. I would think that that would also lead to uh, starting with a, a higher level of expertise in a particular field would lead to a faster resolution, less time uh, spent learning about what legal aspects are uh, at play in the case. Absolutely. Okay. Undoubtedly, that's, that's where specialization does, does so you, help. And we also have uh, resources, for instance, during the Ask a Lawyer programs, we have uh, a very detailed uh, legal manual, if you will, for our our volunteer attorneys as a reference source beyond, of course, what's easily found, can be found online. And, and guess what? That's what we lawyers do. We are constantly looking up the law, applying the law to the facts to solve that, so that uh, challenge. So you mentioned earlier that there's a, a almost a coalition of available attorneys that are already engaged with pro bono commission. Uh, if an attorney is maybe watching this program and thinking, oh, gee, I'm, I'm you know, I meant to, that was one of my New Year's resolutions, but I really haven't gotten involved uh, with that yet. Uh, what are, are the opportunities or what are the requirements for a local attorney or even a, an area attorney that might want to get involved with pro bono commission? Sure, yeah, as I said, the local bar has been excellent. We could always use more help and, and they can simply reach out uh, either to uh, Felicia at whitewatervalleyprobono.org. Uh, all the contact information uh, for Felicia email and phone is on the website or through back through to me. Uh, and, and then we, we have a discussion about, well, what are your interests? Do you want to take on individual matters? What are your areas of specialization? Would you rather do the ask a lawyer or also just to be a resource if a specific challenging issue comes up that they can be a resource for other volunteer lawyers. Um, and so as we build that bank, both within Wayne County, and outside of Wayne County, uh, we'll have more uh, more resources available and more diversity of practice experience. And I, I alluded to this earlier. Um, we, we've we've got a, a unique advantage, um, even though the the bar is of course of limited size in Wayne County, and, and they step up. We have lots of uh, Wayne County natives like myself who care deeply about uh, their home county. And, and the people in the community. And our board, for instance, of our 19 board members, we've got a, a number of people who are in other boards in, in Wayne County, as, as is often the case, and, and really uh, top-notch uh, public servants. Uh, but then we also have, um, just look at our list now, we've got people from Muncie, Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Lafayette, Chicago, Greenville, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indianapolis. So we've got a number of lawyers from uh, Richmond originally in Wayne County and, and Centerville who are out living and practicing elsewhere who want to give back here back at home. Uh, and there's been a, a, a lot of bad things come out of the pandemic. One of the positives is that the delivery of legal services has changed remarkably to where which we always had phone, but but now just as you and I are doing this by Zoom, it's seamless, uh, very effective. Uh, and so it allows um, a broader base of volunteer attorneys to contribute uh, their talent uh, back here at home in Wayne County. The technology has really decreased the amount of travel time uh, that's necessary to connect disparate individuals and, like you said, allow people who are not living in the area right now an opportunity to serve here uh, by just really logging into their system where they sit in, uh, you know, hundreds of miles away. Absolutely. So we've had flashing on the lower thirds repeatedly, the contact information. There's a website. There's a phone number that you can a call, there's email, and those are all ways that you can get connected. So if we have a viewer who thinks they might have a legal issue that would be addressed by the Pro Bono Commission, they're not sure 
what it is, they can reach out to those areas. On the website, is there a, a form they can fill out or is it just call and, and say, hey, Felicia, I've got a problem? Absolutely. There, there is a form and, and uh, we reworked the website last year, modernized it, uh, whitewatervalleypropono.org. And up at the top menu, there's an application bar that I'm looking at it now. You hit it and it has just a, a few uh, boxes to fill in that really expedite um, our efficiency in, in, in responding because as that comes in, Felicia knows then all the contact information and basics, uh, but including who else might be involved. Because if we're going to involve a volunteer attorney, if Joe and Jane are on opposite sides of a dispute, the lawyer is going to have to do a conflict search to make sure, all right, can we take on Jane when we already represent Joe? Of course not. So that application um, is uh, very, very helpful. And also uh, phone calls or emails are welcome as well. Oftentimes, uh, we'll still redirect the inquiring uh, resident back to the application for more information. Uh, we also recognize that not everyone has access uh, to a computer or, or um, online services, and, and so the phone, phone works fine, um, and then we figure out ways to communicate that are most efficient. Of course, during COVID, it's been you know, less and less in-person contact, but as things get, get uh, hopefully improved uh, through the year, uh, we'll be doing uh, some of that as well. The Ask a Lawyer clinics, by the way, are really a good time for people to come in where they just don't know if they have a legal issue or what it might be, and we sort that out and they get to have some face-to-face -face contact with Alicia, our other staff member, Aubrey, uh, and then one of the volunteer attorneys. Now there are some requirements for pro bono service. It, it, pro bono, of course, means free. And so there are some income requirements because at a certain point, uh, people are expected to pay their own way, as it were. Uh, so what are the requirements or where can we find out more about those requirements and what populations are served by the pro bono commission? Certainly. So um, we, we do uh, on the intake form, ask for income and we work off of the um, established poverty guidelines. Uh, we don't have a rigid, you know, at 125% or 150%, if you're a dollar over that, we're not going to help you. Um, we, we are a little more nimble about that. Um, and, and sometimes we'll find maybe someone had counsel and they've exhausted their resources for counsel. Uh, they had counsel previously. Uh, so we're uh, more open-minded and nimble and flexible about that. But it's sort of basic common sense. If someone has a legal issue and, and has the financial wherewithal to hire any of this very skilled counsel in Wayne County, we want them to do that. Um, and if so that we can devote our resources to those who cannot afford. So it's basically a can afford, cannot afford. And that also takes into consideration, well, what type of matter is it? By the way, we don't uh, take on what I'll call fee generating cases like personal injury cases uh, because there's already a market for that. Uh, as you alluded to, there are very plenty of very good Wayne County lawyers who will take on a car accident or a, whatever the case might be where there's a contingency fee and they don't have to pay any money up front. We're talking more about everyday life issues, you know, guardianship, elder law, Landlord tenant has been a, a huge one um, through the pandemic and uh, consumer issues, bankruptcy, et cetera. There are a couple of issues in our demographic here in Wayne County that uh, I'm sure come up repeatedly in the law. Uh, as you just mentioned, um, the landlord tenant and uh, the, um, I was thinking elder care, uh, we do have an aging population here in Wayne County, and there are a lot of people who are now uh, facing the issues of aging parents and all the health and medical issues that go along with those and legal issues that are involved with caring for an, an aging parent. Um, if someone has that kind of an issue, again, the, the thing that keeps coming to mind is this Ask a Lawyer workshop that you have will be a great place to go and see where's a good starting point for that and uh, see what those resources are. And much better to talk to an actual attorney 
about it than uh, you know trying to fumble your way through uh, the amount of information that's available on in, online or from somebody who may know somebody who knows something. Uh, so the absolutely, absolutely, and we we run those. Uh, the next one is coming up Thursday, March third, uh, from four to six. We always do those right now in the four to six time period. Uh, that seems to hit well with everyone's sweet spot and allows the lawyer to still get most of their day in and show up and then still be home for uh, soccer practice or dinner or whatever may be going on and likewise convenient for, for folks. So it really is a great first place to check in um, and we'll be implementing as, as we evolve further uh, some periodic ones that are, are just phone banks or, or Zoom uh, so that people don't need to go someplace else to, to find us. So we've mentioned as we come to the close of our program that there are several groups of Wayne County residents that might be involved with the pro bono commission. Of course, the attorneys who provide their services and the uh, residents who may or may not need legal services may or not know whether they need them. So you have the uh, ASCA clinic and the connection there with Morrison Reeves Library. Uh, are there any other ways that people should or can get connected with the pro bono commission? You mentioned board members earlier. It sounds like you've got a pretty full board, but uh, are there other ways that people can get connected? Certainly. So always welcome volunteers. Uh, we've got various events that go on through the year. Uh, take take the Ascalera clinics. Um, you know, we could use someone additionally to help um, as people come in and check them in and and get their basic information. Um, we put on uh, a golf outing, a run or, uh, a run or walk for justice in August at Glen Miller. Uh, we have a holiday uh, pro bono luncheon at the end of the year, and we've done some other events. Uh, COVID has tamped some of those down. But yeah, always welcome volunteers. Um, and uh, we, we've been very blessed in the community uh, to have the support of um, many foundations, the Wayne County Foundation. Um, Doc's Pop does a matching campaign with us every year. Uh, so the generosity of local donors, both business um, uh, endowments and foundations, and then just individuals. Uh, every dollar helps. We're a very lean budget. The city of Richmond has been very grateful to us. We have our office space uh, there at the city building, uh, essentially rent free, uh, which takes away uh, that overhead cost. So it, it really does uh, you know, take a village to support what we do to help support the community. And we oftentimes interact with and get referrals from the dozens of other wonderful nonprofits here in the community, and, and we often refer back to them. John, thank you for closing out there with all of those great connections. Really appreciate John Maley, the board chairman for the Whitewater Valley Pro Bono Commission, appearing with us today on our program. John, thanks for coming. And thanks I'm your host, Michael Swigert. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next month.